Okay, Dr. Udeen, so uh, thanks for giving me some of your time. It's a great pleasure to speak to you um, as we embark on this most weird, I would say, of, of charter days and everything, but, but true to the mission of UOG, um, you know, we continue on and we, we, we continue the work. So um, maybe, uh, can you give me some like backstory about the, about the College of Natural and Applied Sciences? And it seems to me maybe because of Guam's uh, climate, our interests and the history of our people, it seems to be the most natural fit for the, lo for the local community. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. You know, um, the University of Guam received what we know as land grant status in 1972. And in 1972, when the USDA gave us land grant status, at that time, um, they also had to create a college. And the college back in those days was called the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences. And we grew up um, as the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences um, for many years, including when your, your, your beloved dad, who was a close friend of mine, who was the president here at the university. But in about, uh, let me think about the year, but in 2004, under, at that time, um, the ninth president of the university, Dr. Harold Allen, Dr. Allen redid the whole structure of the university. And what he decided to do is to create a college called the College of Natural and Applied Sciences and he took the old College of Agriculture and the, uh, he split up the College of Arts and Sciences, took the science and the old College of Agriculture and put them together and called it the College of Natural and Applied Sciences. So um, I basically have been the first Dean of this new college since 2004. Um, we have uh, quite a few of undergraduate programs biology and chemistry and computer science, which I'd like to talk a little bit more about. Um, also, uh, we, we have physics, we have the ROTC program uh, under us, and of course the, the ag uh, uh, component. And then we have- Which nobody could touch, by the way. The, the ROTC program, I remember growing up as a kid, everybody knew like how nationally dominant the ROTC unit was. <laughs> I mean, I, I, have, I have actually seen, Doc, more, yeah. more 20 and 21 year olds going back to the time when I was there or with the rain who had earned the ranger tab in the army proper that were still yeah. cadets in UOG and that says a lot. No, that's right. And let me tell you, it's a great program. And all, what they, they're called the professor of military science, the lieutenant colonels that run the program. They've been exceptional men. One day I'm sure there'll be an exceptional woman there, but I've really enjoyed having them with us. And, and we also have three master programs in this college now um, in, in biology and environmental science and a newly created one under agriculture called Sustainable Ag. So, so we're, we're a pretty diverse uh, college. Well, we're diverse in, in many other ways too, because my also my hat is director of the experimental stations and Guam Cooperative Extension, but we, we can go into that. I, hopefully I answered that first question for you. Oh, absolutely. Perfect. You've also got one of the nicest buildings on campus and yet nobody ever wants to use the parking facility. Everybody prefers to, to park on the grass over there. Yeah, I know. And, 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 but I'm, I'm training them to stay off the grass, you know, but that's a tough thing to say on Guam, stay off the grass. I think it's if kind of a rite of passage. Just... I know everyone's like, like, if you're going to go study there and everything you put, you park on the grass and that means you're in. <laughs> Yeah, no, that may be true. That's maybe true. I'm not That's sure true. if your undergraduate advisors actually say that, but I mean, I, I think it's a, I think it's tradition now. <laughs> it could be. Jason, yeah, because yeah, yeah, no, that, that, that could be true. Um, you know, one of the, um, a little bit of our achievements over the years is that because we're kind of like a three-legged stool of this, of this university, because we have the academic programs, we have the ag research programs, and we have the extension and outreach. So one of the one of the you know big achieve, achievements that we've done for many many years is every year we kind of do an annual report to highlight what we're doing with the federal and local funds. So um, the the research arm is called the Western Pacific Western Pacific Tropical Research uh, Institute, and every year they put out um, uh, uh, an impact report. And all this is found on our website for people who are interested. I'm gonna, if you don't mind, I'm gonna show you a picture of the of, of last year's cover. I'm not sure if you can, can see it or not. Certainly. But every year, yeah, but every year we, we put out an impact report that talks about how local and federal funds are used in agricultural research. We do the same thing. I'll show you this one in our cooperative extension, how we deal with community issues. And the most recently we've kind of outlined how both 
student and faculty are doing research together. And we just, our media group created this. It's called um, uh, Deep Dive into, into CNAS. So these are three um, journals that we publish on a yearly basis. And all this is found on our website for people, Jason, who want to know a little bit more of how their local money is being spent and how our federal funds are also being spent as well. Mm -hmm. How would you say the, the, um, those students who make the choice and who, and who volunteer to pursue um, a degree and a discipline under the various colleges that, that, your, that your school has and everything like that, what is the tempo and what is the attitude of those students? Because uh, Ag and Life Sciences has always had its own very distinct you know, like kind of culture and the students wear it with pride. I mean, they're very, very proud to pursue their studies, but it's a lot different than the CPBA students or the nursing <laughs> students or, or the school sure. of education students. They're, they're very much their own group. Absolutely. In positive ways. And, and I think in very positive ways. And these are young men and women, Jason, like yourself who grew up here. Um, you know, I remember for years um, uh, going and, and meeting with your uncle who used to farm in, in, in the Ordot area. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is part of their, their culture. Uncle Joe. You know, your, your Uncle Joe, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And your Aunt Marilyn, who's still farming today. Mm -hmm. And there's a cultural thing. So Has she given you bananas are, this week, by the way? Yeah, she better. She better. Yeah, I'll, I'll make sure she drops them off for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. So this is a cultural thing with these young men and women, and they want to make a difference. And, and so, yeah, the ag, the ag students, and I'm teaching, and I don't teach very often, but I'm teaching a capstone class in agriculture this semester. So um, I, I, it's wonderful to see these young men. And I have a two, two students who are from Micronesia who have that still that same love and drive um, in, in the field of agriculture. But this college now is much broader. I mean, there's two, two, two highlighted um, areas also, Jason, besides ag that we've done extremely well is in my biology program, especially in my pre-med, as we've talked about how well the nursing program is done. And the nursing program students have to take three or four of, of the classes that we offer in CNAS. But the, 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 the pre-med, the, the bio-med majors are doing remarkable work, not only when they're here as undergraduates, but they're getting into medical schools throughout the United States, vet schools, um, uh, dental schools, pharmacy schools. So these are really talented young STEM majors that are doing extremely well. Mm -hmm. Um, one other thing, too, that I'd just like to bring about is that we're doing for the first time a bridge program between GCC and UOG and computer science. So in our new computer science degree program, they start the first two years at GCC and then they transfer seamless. We accept every credit that they take, even their GE credits, into our third and fourth year program in our computer science. So this is something brand new. The first cohort will start in August, and I think that's going to be a plus plus as well. That is fantastic. I, I would hope at some point that, that UOG would actually have, as part of their general ed requirements, like everybody at least take like a rudimentary computer science course. Yeah, I that's agree. Such a, that's such a key. Then again, I'm biased. I'm a computer guy. <laughs> yeah, and I know you are, and you're a wonderful computer guy, and I like how you talk about it and, and live it because I think that's really important. Listen, I have a six-year-old. And in he sometimes I have to go to him and say, "Can you help me out?" I mean, it's just amazing what these young, young, young kids are able to do these days in in in, in the field of, of uh, working with uh, iPads or, or 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 their iPhones. Okay. Um, what are some of the the achievements uh, that the that the school has has earned? I say is, is the most appropriate way to put it, like over the years, and and what is it what is it known for? Well, um, I, I really think that um, uh, known for, if you take a look in the last five or six years, Jason, of the valedictorians that, that are coming out of the university, we now have, and it didn't used to be this way, but now we have over half of the valedictorians um, uh, representing uh, this college and being the overall student, both male and female, um, at the university. So our, our degree programs are not only hard, and I think they really are hard, Jason, compared, I'm not picking on, on you or my colleagues from the other uh, colleges. <laughs> no, they, they are quite challenging. But, yeah. but they're very challenging. And these young men and women are doing so well that they're competing with everybody else and doing extremely well. So I think um, the placement of them, as I said, in some of these very uh, noted medical schools and dental schools kind of show who we are. And um, I think those that stay on island um, have proven 
to, to, to get really good jobs afterwards. Listen, the STEM fields aren't easy, but I think it's who we've come as a, a reputation. And many of our graduates who stay on island, Jason, go into our master's program in biology and environmental science or stay and work in the both local and federal government. So I think what we're producing is um, uh, a group of individuals that um, this society and, and the culture of Guam can be extremely proud of. And mm -hmm. I'm proud of all my graduates. We talked a little about ROTC. I mean, look, look what they have done. You know? Yeah, and, and I wanted, I wanted to say that that's perfect how you said a lot of students come back and want to complete like advanced degrees because, in my experience, um, yes. it has been your school more than any other where you have more students come back, um, yes. and either if they just want to go there and you know maybe take another class or they want to just go and uh, audit a lecture or they want to actually give a guest um, a guest speech, a speaking engagement. Um, it seems like the natural sciences students always want to return and then give back. And they're so known for, for the research initiatives that they undertake or, you know, or, um, or the things that they, that they discover. I mean, we in the media, we cite them all the time. It's, you know, there, there have been findings, there have been theories, there have been, you know, um, some breakthroughs and everything right. like that. And I'm sure that that's something of which you're incredibly proud. Of. Absolutely. You know, when you talk a little earlier, you talked about legacy. I mean, the true legacy of an administrator, obviously, and I learned this from your prop, Jason, is that you want to hire the best. You know, the, the, your legacy is hiring really good faculty that stimulate these young minds. Because if you can, listen, I would rather have um, somebody brilliant who might only be here for two or three years, but usually they stay much longer than somebody mediocre that's here forever that, 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 you know, I just sometimes get stuck with. So I've learned as an administrator that the key really is Jason to hire the best. And many of them are those that are, were local men, local boys and girls, men and women who came through our program, went out to get their master's or PhD, Jason, and came back and teach. Those are my ambassadors. And those are the ones that these young men and women look up to and say, I can do that. And that's what they've been able to do. They've been mm. able to do it. And the Marine Lab is, is under your school as well, right? The, the, the Marine Lab um, academic program is under their bio, their So their master's program is. The Marine mm. Lab has their own director, um, uh, Dr. Lori Ramundo. So they report uh, to their own uh, director. That's right, Dr. Lori. Yeah, Dr. Ramundo. But, is, no problem. but, yeah. but, but in, in the biology program for their master's, it's most of their students, where all their students uh, are under the College of Natural and Applied Sciences. And how, how, how does that weigh in uh, to the luster of, of the overall college? Because I know, again, like the two things I knew growing up is when, whenever as a kid, we would take these field trips and go to Charter Day. And, you know, you, we would see the planetarium and we'd see, you know, the ROTC unit would do a demonstration and they would, they would let us know in no, in no uncertain terms that they were the very best in the nation. And then they would also say that we've got a world-class marine biology program. I mean, you know, you are looking at something that people from all over the world come here, you know, to study at the graduate level. Absolutely. And, and I think we still have that reputation. And we got a huge grant and, and uh, maybe Dr. Ramunda will talk to you about it or, or Terry Donison about the EPSCOR grant. That's really, you know, it's a $20 million grant that, re, that the university recently got. And the, and the interesting aspect about that is it caters for those students who want to go into marine biology. It pays for everything, it pays for a, a stipend every month. It pays for um, uh, uh, their tuition, it pays for their books and, and, and earns them um, uh, work to, to, to finish their master's program. And they're targeting, their, the first priority, Jason, is local students, and that's the key. So you fill that group first, and then, you know, perhaps, like you said, we're world renowned, so other people want to come here as well, but at least catering to, to, to young men and women who want to go into that field. And we need them. And many of them, as you know, Jason, go on to do their PhDs and then, you know, hopefully come back and, 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 and come back and, and teach for us yeah. or be researchers for us. Yeah. I mean, if for no other reason than we got all these damn crown of thorns starfish that show up every fall right there on Pago <laughs> Bay, you might as well go there and jump in the water and study them. <laughs> there you go. And that's what they do. Listen, this environment is perfect for that. How many universities sit at, at, at a place called Pago Bay where you can just go out? It's a, it's a, it's, you know, it's, it's right there in our, in our doorstep. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Well, wrapping up, um, Dr. Eugene, from, from your vantage point, um, looking ahead, maybe for the, for the next few years. And once we can hopefully get out of this very awkward uh, phase that we're in right now because of the pandemic and everything, um, what do you envision as far as 
maybe expansion, enhancement, um, some, some of the ways that the, that the program can not only continue its track record of success, but to build upon that? Sure, um, Jason, great question. And, and what's hurt us in this last couple of years and, and the pandemic has hurt us even worse is that I've had a lot of people who have retired, obviously, um, which, is, which is part of every college. Not being able to recruit brand new faculty members has really hurt me. So I'm down in the number of, of faculty that I, I need to hire to keep these programs going. Um, one of the unique things, Jason, that's just coming out of NIFA, which is the National Institute in Food and Ag, is that they're proposing finally, um, they're asking for 11 point, $11.5 billion to work on infrastructure throughout the, the land grant schools in ag. Um, I met with uh, the congressman just two or three days ago to say, if this legislation comes through, can you support it? And he was definitely willing to support it, that we finally might get funds, Jason, to rebuild some of the buildings that were built. The science building that I have was built in 1964. Mm -hmm. Our research stations were built in the mid seventies. They need money. It's tough to teach 21st century science in 20th century buildings. So that's, you know, that, that's what I like to work on. I really would like to be able to use some of these funds and grow these facilities much bigger than we are today. And we mm -hmm. need the feds to do it. And I think we're in prime time to, to be able to do it, Jason. All right. And then, then um, okay, fi final two questions. I just thought here's a two-parter. Uh, when it comes okay. to, to this, this year's Charter Day theme of uh, transforming lives, advancing communities, it's self-evident yeah. what the school does. But in, in your view, as the head guy and everything like that, how does uh, your college transform lives and advance the communities? Sure. So, you know, um, it's all going to be virtual. Um, I have my media team right now uh, videoing all the individuals that are going to be showcased. And it's, it shows the diversity of this college. Most of it deals with our outreach uh, component, Jason. So we're highlighting um, beekeeping. We're highlighting what agriculture is all about. We're highlighting how to deal with um, uh, uh, food inequities. We're uh, dealing with almost every aspect that will try to improve the lives of our community. That's one beautiful aspect about land grant. Jason, it deals with not only the academic programs, but land grant was established to try to improve the lives of our community. So every aspect, youth development, youth at risk, is all being showcased this year in our Charter Day. So I invite everybody to come online to be able to, to see all the presentations that we have next week. Um, in the years past, as you know, our courtyard was filled with thousands of people that were able to go from one canopy to the other. Well, this year the canopy is going to be on the on the on the on the virtual Zoom, so it'll be a little different. But we're still going to showcase exactly what this college is all about. All right, fantastic. And then and then final question, like a little bit of a uh, like a trivia a trivia curveball here and everything. What what is one thing that not that many people besides you know about your school that that would surprise them? Like what's, what's one interesting factoid that will blow people's minds? Oh, you really put me on the spot there, Jason. <laughs> uh, uh, one thing, huh? Hmm. Even if it's quirky, just like in some. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, like didn't, didn't, no. didn't the ROTC unit actually have, they've repelled down the side of the science building before, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, they, they, yeah. Before they, they had their own proper the, tower, right? Right. Yeah. Excuse me. When they had that proper tower. So I'm just trying to think, you put me a little on the spot, but um Oh, you know, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. What are we known for? I think wasn't there a rumor that that the that the uh, computer science the, com the computer the computer lab was haunted at one point? Like, oh yeah, that excuse me, the science building is supposed to be haunted. You know, yeah, most people don't stay most people don't stay there past ten o'clock because they feel that aspect of it. But I, I, you know, I'm just thinking a little bit more on, on that question. I do believe that because of how many local people stay within this college, I think that what we offer is the aspect of, 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 of cultural reality of, of, of partying probably better than, than most people. If you want a, a trivia thing is that we probably party the hardest. I will life. not dispute that claim. You, <laughs> you had, had, honestly, you guys put on the most kick butt uh, haunted house. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly. And, and if you, in, in the old days of Charter Day, when things are a little different, and I'm not talking about Blue Nights when you were part of this old yeah. <laughs> but, but but the parties afterwards over here were probably the biggest success of all. Yeah, yeah agriculture majors really know how to party. <laughs> they know how to party. Yeah. And that, that's, that's a perfect a way to end. So 
Okay. So, okay. So, Doc, okay. congratulations on your achievements and and that of your school, and um, and have a wonderful charter day this year. We appreciate. Thank it. I appreciate it. All right. Good luck to you, and 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 thank you for doing this for the university. Well, well thank you, and th and thank you for the kind words about my father. That that means so much. Well, he's 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 always lives in our hearts and my heart, as you know that very well. No, thank you. Yeah, I do.